So, if you know me, you know, uh, I'm not particularly a Sean Strickland fan. I'm not particularly a Sean Strickland hater. I, a little bit. I am a little bit. Because I'm a little salty. I'm a little salty what happened with Izzy, but, you know, fair play to him. You know, he, 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 uh, he put up a good fight, put up a good strategy. That's a nightmare. That's a nightmare matchup for Izzy. Uh, in hindsight, especially someone who shuts off a jab like that and doesn't like he reacts to the feints but his reactions all put him in a place where he can like you can't just take an easier free shot and the openings are really weird and obscure and even then he could still counter you from the, so yeah like it's a really nightmare matchup you kind of like for izzy izzy got to be in his kelvin gastelum bag where he's like i just gotta fight your ass he, you just you just gotta fight that nigga, bro. You know what I'm saying? You gotta fight him, and uh, I actually think that Drakus fight. I do think Sean will win, but I think it's a lot more interesting because Drakus does have that power, and as you saw in the Jerry Cannonier fight, Sean's fights are a lot closer when he has a guy who has that one shot power, who has heavy hands, who can get his respect. I don't think he's gonna be walking down Drakus the whole time. Drakus ain't one of those that you could just walk down. Uh, and he never gets your respect at any moment in the fight. Izzy, if you're a Sean Strickland, you can do that. Uh, or Alex Pereira, someone with really good pressure and uh, either really good defense or effective defense, or you have so much pressure and threats with your weapons that that is your defense, right? So, yeah. But I think that Drykus, that fight's going to be interesting. I they're so both of them are so herky jerky with their style. They're both some fucking weirdos, right? So that fight's really interesting. Anyways, that's not what I've come here to talk about. Um, what I've come here to talk about is, uh, I mean, the 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 hypocrisy of Sean Strickland and his uh, supporters. I think that uh, I've noticed this for a little bit now, and I felt that. I should say it. I mean, I, I've always been like, man, like, if someone just knew, like, Sean O'Malley is cool, but Sean O'Malley don't know how to roast. If somebody actually knew how to fry somebody's ass, like, if they actually could talk well and articulate some pretty good jokes. Hold on. <laughs> Have some pretty decent charisma. Because that's really all Sean is, is Sean. Hold on. <laughs> Sean has some good charisma. He's a pretty good public speaker. My, in my bad, y'all. I'm sick. So, clearly. <laughs> clearly. This motherfucker coughed in my day. <coughs> I'm getting over it, though. But, yeah. <coughs> I was like, yeah, no. If somebody could fry his ass. Like, if somebody knew how to just fry his ass a little bit and have some good charisma. They could talk well and... <coughs> Sean would be easy to cook. He has so many, like, low-hanging fruits that, that's there. And it's not even the, you know, oh, your dad, you know, touch. You could go there and you could build upon that. But I, I, there's no need for me. Uh, like, if I was doing that, I, I wouldn't need to do that. It's just little shit with Sean. So, Sean, Sean talks about how certain people are either sellouts or they're not real men. They're clowns. They're this, they're that. First things first, Sean Strickland is a clown. I'm going to be honest with you. Sean Strickland says a lot of dumb and shock value shit that kind of makes him look like not that smart. Nobody really looks at Sean as smart. People look at Sean as like the, the idiot that doesn't know how to shut the fuck up, right? Which is you putting your public image down and putting yourself down for other people's entertainment. Sean isn't some profound scholar. So the people who do look at him like that, they're all stupid. So congratulations, you got a bunch of idiots that think you're smart and supporting you and you sound so great. But Sean isn't necessarily like looked at as some scholar. He's not looked at as some super intelligent guy. And that whole Nina shit, obviously Nina doesn't want to fuck him. Doesn't fuck this guy. She's using him for content, guys. That's it. And they may both be using each other for content. Because I think, the thing about Sean, most of this is him 
trying to get uh, his name in algorithms and he's trying to profit off of this, right? He's trying to get talked about. He wants to get talked about so that he grows his fan base so that he can make more money. That's it. He don't care about you niggas. He don't care about this masculinity crisis because Sean is not the most masculine guy in the world, right? Sean isn't the embodiment of masculinity. Sean has a lot of insecurities. Sean does a lot of things that he still ain't there, right? I'm not the most masculine guy in the world. But I'm not going to make myself the face of masculinity and start saying how America doesn't have any men and you really need to be be a man and the part about being a man. And be yeah, being a man is beating dudes the fuck up that you have way more experience than. <laughs> Regardless, so even if the niggas talk shit, even if they didn't, like even if they did, they didn't, you're beating them the fuck up needlessly while you're a professional fighter. Yeah, that's so manly and masculine. Oh, why? So you can prove something to yourself? Because, oh, wait. If Sean doesn't fight people, as he said, if he doesn't fight people, he can't control his emotions. A part of the virtues of being a man in masculinity is controlling your emotions. That's one of the core tenets of that shit. You have to be able to be in control of your emotions and not let your emotions control you. But if he's not doing that, he's online arguing with women. He's online going back and forth with them and talking shit to them and putting down their accomplishments. So is he really a man? But not only that, this is like the lowest hanging fruit that most people don't really say anything about. At least to me, I find it very interesting because I would say another one of the tendencies of being a man right, is <laughs> knowing what you want out of life and putting yourself in positions to get that. And I would say Sean is in a position to have that. You're a fucking world-class fighter with uh, decent enough notoriety. People do know who you are, right? And you're respected within your, within your sport, what you do, your passion, what you do, you are respected, right? You become a fucking world champion. So if there are certain things in life that you won't accept or that you do not like, you remove yourself from those situations because you will not accept that. So for instance, he could have a friend, like he's like, man, all right, for my friends, I, I have a certain, you don't even need to be famous for this. Like, it would be me, nigga, you know what I'm saying? If I don't want a friend who does not sell out on his friends for some girl, right? I'm not going to accept that. I'm not. So if one of my friends do that, I'm not talking to them anymore. That's it. You fucked it up, buddy. Right? I'm not talking to you anymore. You can go do that with other people, whatever. Me and you, we're, 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 we're good. Like, that's it. You put yourself in a position. You don't even need to put yourself in a position. Just always position yourself in, in uh, conversations or in interactions to not accept certain things from people that you don't want to accept. Having boundaries, right? So Sean Strickland with his girlfriend. And this is this is so like not masculinity in, 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 in a couple ways. Because the first way is his girl is clowning him on an embedded. She's clowning him. She's saying this to make fun of him in front of everybody. Right? Humiliating him. If you are so masculine, why isn't your girl that you've been with respecting you and... Why is she hum humiliating you on a fucking embedded? Mr. Masculinity. Mr. Peak Masculinity, right? Your own girl is humiliating you. You talk about people being a clown. Your own girl sees you as a clown and she's humiliating you on a fucking embedded. And embedded is your moment to shine before a fight. <sighs> right? That's your time to shine. And she decided I'm going to humiliate you says a little bit about the inner workings of the dynamics between you and her and how she sees you and whether you're really a, a masculine, right? Masculine guy. Maybe that's why Andrew bothers him so much. Andrew Tate. I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. But, uh, but while she's saying this stuff that's humiliating him, she tells a story that further, I think she did this on purpose because she's, I think she wanted everyone to see this dude ain't masculine, bro. At least, at least women will peep it. At least women will peep it. And I don't think Sean has hordes of women that 
And I'll tell you that actually because of the story. So in the story, she says, there was one day where Sean asked me if I committed a crime. I don't know. I guess it was, I think he was saying it was a murder or something. And like I did it. Um, would you, you know, ride or die? Like, you know, like ride or die with me? Or would you turn me in and call the police? So he was checking to see. Now, this question was a shit test by Sean. Because if she ride or dies, well, that means she's in love with him. Any girl, any girl that's in love is going to... There are girls who will bury bodies for their fucking boyfriends. There are, there are girls who... They found out that their boyfriends was doing some vile shit. It could be anything, bro. I've seen... I've seen it be... Not in real life, obviously. You know? But I've seen it be m murders to some... EDP type shit. And they even they may have started participating in the EDP type shit. Because they were just so in love with and respected that boyfriend so much. It was it's fucking insane. When women are insane and obsessed with the dude, they will go. This girl ain't in love and obsessed with Sean. I don't think that shit's gonna work out in a little bit, but you know, hey, I mean I hope it works out for him. I mean, I'm not gonna wish bad on someone's relationship. But based off that, I don't based off the little bit I did see with her, I I, I don't think so. Like I, I don't think so at all. So, anyways, she says, she says that Sean asked that, and, she, and when she answered, she said that she would call the police, right? So then she said Sean spent all day, maybe multiple days, I'm not sure, but at least all day, pouting, like crying about it, being upset. And he was talking about, oh, I'm going to oh, break up, and oh, no. Uh, but he ended up staying with her. Now, Sean, clearly. Now, this is a situation where you clearly want a girl who's going to ride or die when you commit a crime. And, hey, look, bro. You deserve that. You're a duck. You, you, you're fucking, you worked your way up to fight for a world title in the most prestigious combat sports organization in the world right now. If you want to get a girl who's going to be a ride or die, you deserve to get a girl who's going to be a ride or die. Especially, I mean, her. It ain't like she like a... I mean, at least Ian G Gary's wife is like, like a, like a seven or eight. You know what I mean? Like she's an attractive woman. I mean, she got kids though, so and it, that that whole situation. I don't want to get too too much into people's relationships on videos, bro. That's just corny to me. You know, like I don't like when the MMA community, even if you're right, like it just doesn't matter. I don't like talking about on people's relationships too much. But I'm speaking on Sean. It, it, well, I don't like speaking on people's girls, right? But I'll I'll look at Sean and how he interacts in a relationship. So. Or Ian Gary, how he interacts in a relationship. I'm not going to go in on people's girls and people's wives. I don't, I don't like doing that shit. That shit's corny. <laughs> but anyway, looking at Sean. Sean, instead of positioning himself to be in a situation where, okay, you got something that you didn't like. You don't accept that. You clearly don't want that out of a girl. Instead of going to another girl. Because if Sean was so masculine, women would love him. He'd be able to find another girl easy or he'd probably have another girl on his roster or whatever or whatever and then he'd just go to her right instead he has no options he gets no bitches whatsoever all he had was her she's the short bet so he stuck around and accepted the shit that he didn't like there's nothing masculine about that there's nothing masculine about pouting anyways all day but there's also nothing masculine about accepting something that you don't like <sighs> Why didn't you put your foot down, bro? He talks about this masculinity virtue. What the fuck was that? We ain't even gonna talk about that weird shit where he like forced the kiss from her when they were in the forest. That that shit was weird. It almost looked like he. It almost looked like he didn't want to. Like it, he looked uncomfortable. Like like he's like a closeted homo trying to pretend to be in love with a girl. That's what it. Th that shit was weird. But I don't know. I don't want to speculate too much on that. <laughs> I've already speculated enough, so, yeah. But, um, yeah, no. Sean talks about this masculinity virtue and this and that, and there's nothing masculine about that, right? There's nothing masculine. At all. He thinks he can go around. He can go and then start talking about, oh, this guy, he's not masculine. None of these UFC, all these UFC guys are doors, bro. I'm gonna be real. All of them are doors. A lot of the shit Sean O'Malley says, like, I just, I, I don't think he should have shared that goddamn much about his girlfriend. A lot of shit Sean O'Malley says, eh, well, 
I'm like, yeah, you can tell these guys growing up, they, they, they're kind of nerds a little bit. They're kind of dorks. Sean Strickland, you are one too. You ain't some super hype, peak masculine guy, right? You're not. And you know what? At least with, at least with fucking Sean. And this might be, it might even be a jealousy thing with Sean Strickland. At least now, he has a relationship set up that he ideally wants. Now, I would say, I don't, I don't think it's peak masculinity for him in the first place to be, he, he got an open relationship, but that open relationship came from a tit for tat thing that a lot of girls like to do, especially these days, which is, oh, well, if, oh, if you're going to do it, I'm going to do it, right? He clearly didn't want that. That's not what he wanted, but he got negotiated out of that. He got talked down. He didn't want that. He never wanted that, you know? But he didn't bullshit and try to make it seem like he's Mr. Peak Masculinity by doing that. Sean, you try to pretend as if you're something that you're not. You know, and that's the problem. It's this hypocrisy. And it's this, like, blind leading the blind. Or the one-eyed man leading the blind. Right? Like, he don't have his full vision. You don't have a full vision, but you're pretending as if the world that you see is the world that, that, that truly is. And it's not. It's not. I know those words were articulated so profoundly. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I just, I mean, it just rubs me the wrong way, man. It just rubs me the wrong way because he's just like all these other online gurus or whatever, but he's pretending as if he's not. I know it's weird, but, uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and, uh, I'm out.